with Deladon again. We had a great year last year, won a lot of games. Welcome CAA Hoops fans to another episode of CAA Hoops Weekly. I'm your host Bobby Broyles, joined by Rob Washburn. Rob, a lot of shifting around the top of both the CA men's and women's standings this week and seems to be a sign of exciting action to come here in the league. Yeah, I think so, Bobby. Just two games separating the top five teams in the standings on the men's side, and the women's race is even closer, only one game separating the top five teams. So plenty of excitement around the league and plenty to talk about this week. As we take a look at some of the action from this week, you will notice scores from the week popping up on the bottom of your screen. Let's begin on the men's side as the Northeastern Huskies remain undefeated at 5-0 with a win over Hofstra Wednesday night. And Rob, right now it seems that it is a different leading score every night for the Huskies. Yeah, there's few teams in the CAA are as balanced as Northeastern is at this point. Quincy Ford was the big star on uh, Wednesday night, 24 points in the win over the Pride. But he's, they've had four different guys lead the team in scoring over the last six games. Ford and Reggie Spencer providing the, the uh, offense up front, and then the veteran backcourt of Joel Smith and Jonathan Lee makes Northeastern pretty tough to defend. The reason the Huskies are alone at the top of the standings is because of the outcome Wednesday night as Jarrell Benneman once again leading the Towson Tigers to a road win over Delaware, giving the Blue Hens their first loss in conference play. Yeah, Towson trails in that game by six with a little under four minutes to go and rallies and picks up the win. It's their fourth straight win on the road, first time since 2005-06 that they've done that. And as you mentioned, Jarrell Benneman is NCAA leading 12th double-double, 19 points and 13 rebounds in that game. And two remarkable statistics for you, Bobby. First, Delaware goes 0 for 8 from three-point range in that game, ends a streak of 675 games that they made at least one three-pointer. And for Towson now, in the span of 11 days, they've ended Drexel's 17-game CA winning streak, and now Delaware's 10-game CA winning streak. Now we switch over our focus to the CA women's basketball. The Delaware Blue Hens picked up a victory at Northeastern Tuesday evening, and the leading scorer was not Elena Deladon. Yeah, big surprise. Senior Lauren Carra, who had been struggling only 20 points in her past four games, breaks loose 20 points and nine rebounds in a 76-51 victory. Elena, of course, another outstanding effort, 19 points and seven rebounds, four blocks. That's 22 in a row for Delaware in conference play and snap Northeastern's 10-game uh, home winning streak. On Thursday night, it was a battle of unbeatens in the league as Drexel played host to Hofstra, and the Dragons rallied to a 59-52 victory over the Pride. Yeah, Hofstra with a 15-point lead in the first half of that game, but Drexel battles back. Fiona Flanagan hits two three-pointers and gives Drexel its first lead with about three minutes to go. And Taylor Wooten, the big star for the Dragons, 16 of her team-high 24 points in the second half as the Dragons stay unbeaten in the CAA. That was your look around CA men's and women's basketball this week. Now, as we get ready for the, this weekend's action, we will once again begin on the men's side as we have a battle at the top of the standings in Newark Saturday afternoon at 2 o'clock as the Blue Hens look to rebound from their loss to Towson as they play host to the Northeastern, Northeastern Huskies that are sitting at 5-0. Yeah, Northeastern trying to get to 6-0 for the first time since 2008-9 when they did that for the first time. And as we touched on a little bit last week, the Huskies have already posted road wins over Drexel. George Mason and Towson, so a chance with a road win at Delaware to put themselves in a pretty good position. Now for Delaware, they're trying to shake off that difficult loss at home to Towson on Wednesday, and a win over Northeastern on Saturday for them pulls them even, even in the loss column in the standings. So I'm really interested in this game to see the, the, the guard matchups as we touched on earlier. Joel Smith and Jonathan Lee for uh, Northeastern going against Devon Sadler and Jarvis Street for Delaware should be quite a game. Then at 5 o'clock, it will be the Hofstra Pride hitting the road to take on the George Mason Patriots in front of a national audience on the NBC Sports Network. Yeah, George Mason's been nearly unbeatable at home in conference play over the past several years, and they're coming off a 68-57 win over a rival James Madison on Tuesday. Junior Sherrod Wright with 23 points in that victory, and he's been uh, remarkable all season long, and lately, especially late, seven times in the last nine games he scored 20 or more points. Now for Hofter, they struggled through the month of December, but they're now 2-2 two and two in conference play, gave Northeastern a good run on Wednesday night. For them, it's been the sophomore guard, Teron Bowie, the transfer from Penn State, who's been awful good offensively for them, has hit double figures in 11 of his last 12 games. And one other game that we probably want to keep an eye on on Saturday, it's Towson, who's 4-1 and one in second place in the league, playing host to James Madison, who's 3-2, and two, and in a tie for third place, uh, that game at noon on Saturday at Towson. Now here's a look at the rest of this weekend's action around CAA men's basketball.
back over to the women's side now. We talked about Hofstra losing that tough game at Drexel, but now they return home to face another team that's near the top of the league in the Old Dominion Lady Monarchs. Yeah, huge game for both teams. They're both sitting 3-1 and one in the standings right now on the heels of Delaware and Drexel. ODU coming off an impressive 74-50 to 50 win over UNCW on Thursday night where they had six different players score seven or more points. The Monarchs are led by the inside, outside duo of Jackie Cook and Shea Kelly. And as we mentioned earlier, Hofstra had its six-game winning streak come to an end at Drexel, so they're going to be looking to bounce back at home. The Pride also has a formal inside-out duo with the All-American Shante Evans and their guard, Andriana Thomas, who's leading the league in assists. And in Atlanta, uh, Sharon Baldwin Tenner has got her team off to a solid start with a 9 and 6 overall record. They get a good test Sunday as they play host to the JMU Dukes. Yeah, JMU improved to 3 and 1 in the CA on Thursday night after cruising past William and Mary 82 52. And the Dukes have been getting great play from their from backcourt. Tariq Hislop had 21 points in the victory over the Tribe. And of course, Kirby Bur Burkholder, who's one of the league leaders in three pointers. For Georgia State, they're much improved over a year ago, 7-3 and three at home this season, and the Panthers are getting strong play from Kendra Long in the backcourt, and Cody Polk is one of the top inside players in the conference. Here's a quick look at the rest of the action happening around CAA women's basketball. Rob, a couple of school records were broken this past week in both CAA men's and women's basketball. Last Sunday, Hofstra Shante Evans became the all-time leading scorer in the school's history, surpassing Dia LaBella's mark of 1,840 points in a win at George Mason. Then this past Wednesday night, Delaware's Jamel Hagens became the program's all-time leading rebounder, surpassing Spencer Dunkley with 916 rebounds. Two outstanding accomplishments and two great players who uh, will be remembered at their schools for a long time and I know uh, have their sights set on leading their teams to CAA titles this season. We conclude this episode with the Georgia State men's basketball team and head coach Ron Hunter holding their annual Barefoot for Bare Feet game on Wednesday night in a win over William & Mary. Hunter coached the game in his bare feet in support of Samaritan's Feet, an organization that distributes shoes to children in need around the world. Yeah, it's a great cause that Coach Hunter has been involved with for a long time. And last summer, he took his entire team to South Africa where they uh, gave shoes and washed the feet of impoverished children in South Africa. And it provided an education for his players that you don't get just on the classroom, in the classroom or on the basketball court. And it's a memory that I'm sure those players will have for a long time. It's a fantastic cause that he's involved with. A great cause there by Coach Hunter and the Georgia State men's basketball team. That is it for this edition of CA Hoops Weekly. Remember fans to visit casports.com for all the latest information going on around CAA Hoops. For Rob Washburn, I'm Bobby Broyles. Have a great day, everybody.